I have a problem. A dirty floor problem. This is what it looks like when we get these trucks in. My shop floors get so dirty. What am I gonna do? The floor defender. The floor defender? Could the floor defender save me? Defend your vehicle. Uh, this is the floor defender. I'm gonna whip it out. Well, it's already whipped out, so to speak. I'm gonna show you the unboxing, and clearly this is meant to retain oil spills and all kinds of grime and grease. Let's take a look at it here. Features, one-piece construction, uh, ethyl foam barrier, heat-sealed seams. I sort of wondered if it had a lip. It does have a little bit of a lip here, so I'm curious to know how that, how that works. You can see this image here. I would just like to have a nice spot to wash cars and uh, have it contain some of that water. Oh, it's heavy. So we get a lot of vehicles with a ton of snow and ice on them, and they'll come in and as they melt, they'll get to need somewhere to drop. So I can see how this would be a good area for it to fall. And I suppose cleaning things up is just part of the game, whether it's on the, the floor of the shop or on this. So um, anyway, let's get to the foam cannon and see how this goes. So I've just done the foam cannon show because foam is fun, right? I'm sure you guys know this trick. Spray it on the ground first when you put your attachment, your tip on, because you never know when it's gonna fly off. All right. Okay guys, let's take a look right now. Obviously, a little sloppy with the pressure washer, right? This would be in any case, if you had a shop, whatever, if you're gonna spray everywhere, you're gonna spray everywhere. There's a little bit of stuff that comes off, but it's having no issues holding the amount of water that I have put on there. It seems like there's a lot of real estate here for it to hold more water. So that's pretty cool, I mean, if you were a little bit more controlled with your wash process, maybe a rinseless wash or a, a non-pressure washer, maybe you just hose it off uh, in your garage or your shop. I mean, pressure washers are pressure washers, you're gonna use them, but if you have a shop, obviously if you're spraying places that things are gonna spray off of this little perfect rectangle, but you can see a lot of this and the floor is still bone dry. So I have a lot of questions right now about, okay, once this is done, what do I do with this water? But I'm sure that intelligent people can figure that out. And uh, for now, I just wanted to show you how the water is staying in the mat, which is pretty cool. Like I said, it doesn't seem like it's overflowing. You can see right along the edge, it's right up to here but it's not going anywhere. So I think you need a copious amount of liquid to overflow this. Now, I'm gonna do the wash process, a final rinse, so we're gonna add more uh, water to the ground. We'll see how that, that works. The water stays there, which is pretty cool. All 
Are you getting that I'm doing a lot of water here just to test it? And it just, it stays there, okay. See, I thought you'd need a giant foam noodle like at the pool or whatever to keep the water in, but look at that. All contained in there. All right, I'm gonna drive the vehicle out. Let's take a look at uh, what we have left over because this is definitely dirty, smelly water. So I'm gonna drive real slow out of here and then uh, probably do the tire shine out of the garage and uh, touch up the rim, which I didn't do uh, a super dialed in clean on. You know what's fascinating is I felt like I dumped a lot of water onto the ground. And I did, like I, I foamed, I rinsed, I washed, I rinsed. It doesn't look like that much on here, does it guys? It doesn't look like that much on here. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna try to figure out how do I wanna get this water out of here? Um, I could try to dump it in the drain, but a lot of you guys aren't gonna have drains. So what I'll do is probably grab a, a broom. You know, what's interesting is, is like, I think you'd want to get the wrinkles out first, because this is kind of a pain. You could probably leave this on here and a lot of it would just dry. And it would just be a dirty mat, which is kind of cool. But uh, let me just see what I can do here with um, kind of a push broom squeegee. Brush it like, or broom it like this. Let's try this. It's crazy how much water I use. All right, let's just scooch it right there in the drain. Maybe. I guess I can probably broom it out. Let's just go ahead and try to fold this thing up and um, hopefully it doesn't get too moldy, otherwise I could have just left it in the shop. Also, I would wear gloves, but that's a good recommendation for any detailer touching chemicals. Oh. For now, I'm just gonna do this. I'm tired. Okay guys, hard for me to do this because they did send me the floor defender for free and I want to admit that to you guys. I'm gonna give it a strong six, maybe a, a week seven, and there's nothing wrong with this product. It was strong, it kept the water in, and honestly, this is my first crack at it. My complaint was more on the back end, like how do I clean this thing off? How do I dry this thing off? How do I fold this thing up? And I guess there's guys out there who use water reclamation mats all the time. So at this price point, people who have used water mats or reclamation mats before and they see this particular performance because it did everything I wanted it to do. But the question I had in the beginning was, what's gonna happen when the water's there? I didn't quite figure that out. Um, tell me what you think about all this. And then tell me if you think that this is sort of an acceptable result given the sloppy way that I I tried to get that water off the mat. I'm not gonna tell you to like or subscribe, that's all cliche baloney. What I will tell you to do is watch this video about me trying to correct some crazy black paint. I got aggressive, I took some risks. Was it worth it?